You know, this thing's great, but I just wish. This is gonna be good. Hey guys, what's up? It's Man 5 here. Today, we are going to review this. This is a backlit and bivert modded Game Boy Original, aka Game Boy DMG, aka Original Game Boy, aka Game Boy Classic, whatever you want to call it. It is great. Now, before we start, I want to say first thing that if you're looking to mod a Game Boy like this, or a Game Boy Color, or a Game Boy Advance, or a Game Boy Pocket, then you can get all your stuff at handheldlegend.com. If you don't know what that site is, that site is basically in the title. It has Game Boy parts and accessories and even mod tools. It has Sega Game Gear, like where you can put a backlight on a Sega Game Gear. I don't know how to do that because I don't play Game Gear. But it's great. You can get casings, you can get parts, you can get glass screens for your DMG or your Game Boy Color or your Game Boy Pocket, whatever. It's a great site. I recommend you do it. And that leads to another thing. If you're going to mod a Game Boy, I recommend you mod one that needs it. For example, I tried modding a perfectly good Game Boy, it did not work out, I put too much stress on the ribbon cable, and so it broke. And I can't do it anymore. But what I am going to do is, I'm, I have on my watch list on eBay, a Game Boy Pocket that needs a new screen, which I'm going to get a glass one for, it needs a new screen, like, itself, like a polarizing screen and stuff. And that's it. And the thing is, though, it still works. Like, the screen still works, just, just that it has a big burnt circle in the middle. And so what I'm going to do is, since I still have the backlight and a bivert module chip that I never used, the chip I never used, I'm going to mod that Game Boy Pocket when I get it to be biverted and to have a backlight. So that's what I mean. If it deserves to be modded, like the Game Boy Pocket, since it's such a condition to where it can't really be played, but if you mod it, it can be playable again, then do it. But if it's a perfectly good Game Boy, then don't mess with it. I mean, if you buy it if you want to buy it for the historical significance. But if you want to put a glass screen on it, if, if the plastic one came off, I, I would be fine with that. But otherwise, Keep it the same. If it works perfect, if it's fine, nothing's wrong with it, nothing's wrong with the sound, the screen itself, then keep it like that. But if there is something wrong with it, like the sound or the screen, then, then mod it. Other than that, don't. But now guys, let's get right into this review. Okay guys, you may be wondering, what is a Bivert mod? Because backlight mod is obvious, but a Bivert mod, what is that? So, a Bivert mod is basically when you turn the pixels on the Game Boy, because we're talking about the Game Boy, on and off, and then vice versa, vice versa for the same thing. You turn the pixels that are on, off, and then vice versa. And what it does is, it adds more contrast, makes it better looking. And if you do that, you need the backlight mod for this, because in the backlight mod, you have a polarizing film, so you can actually see what's on the screen. And then the original orientation that you use for a regular backlight mod installation without the Bivert chip, you turn it like 90 degrees, giving it a better look. Because if you do it 90 degrees on the regular backlight mod, it will look inverted, which is wrong. Unless you like that. Other than that, if you Bivert and add a backlight mod, it looks amazing. It looks brilliant. I mean, it looks like the way the Game Boy should have been if it had a backlight. And I love it. Now, the Game Boy, the Game Boy is the same form factor. It's the classic Game Boy we all know and love, which is why you're watching this video. It has the gray casing, it has the red buttons, A and B buttons, it has the gray silicone start and select buttons, it has the black D-pad, the Nintendo Game Boy logo on it, the screen, the gray screen that has dot matrix with sound stereo, or stereo sound, it has the little battery icon, it has the contrast dial, the DC input, so if you don't have any batteries in it, you can put a DC adapter and it'll run it, the Game Boy without any batteries in it. You've got the back that has, in my case, the ID number, 
the little blubber stuff, uh, FTC stuff, and then you have the uh, the battery case, as what I call it. I can't remember the bat, the back case, whatever. And thank God of mine, since I got a new one, a new sticker, and now it has the Nintendo Help Line. Logo. On the other side, you have the you have the trading link cable port, and this one did not come with the little protector, but I used the one from the the previous Game Boy I had to put it in. Then you have the volume button. On the top, you have the on and off switch and the game port here on the back. On the bottom, you have a headphone jack. It is the same model as a regular Game Boy would. The only difference is, is the mods installed on it. Now, the mods installed on it are great. I would highly recommend it if you buy one yourself or you want to mod it yourself. Remember, mod it if it's worth it, if it deserves it. If it's perfectly fine, don't. But if it isn't fine and it needs to be modded to be played correctly, then do it. And I would recommend it highly if it deserves it. Like I said before, I know this is going to be redundant, but I can't stop saying it. The Backlight and by Vert mod gives the screen a whole new life and it's the same as the Game Boy. You can play it at night, you can play it anywhere, except in the sun, like a regular LCD screen, because the sun will blind that shit out of proportion. I mean, seriously, you won't be able to see it. Which is the case of any regular Game Boy doesn't matter whether it's color, pocket, Game Boy Advance SP, the uh, 001 model, or the AGS 101 model. AGS 101 being backlight. Or the Game Boy Advance. doesn't matter. The sun will either give you good light, or if it's directly on it, will just blur it out completely. Other than that, the Game Boy is great. I, again, I recommend this to anyone who wants to play the original Game Boy, like Pokemon Red. I'm playing Pokemon Red on this, I'm playing Pokemon Silver on this, I'm playing Pokemon Gold on this. Crystal, I can't because that's Game Boy Color exclusive, technically, and Game Boy Advance, but it doesn't matter. I ain't playing the same all the time when I can. If I'm not working, if I'm not at school, or in class since I'm in college, if I'm not doing homework, I play this or Pokemon Crystal on my modded Game Boy Advance that has a backlit screen. Doesn't matter, I'm, I'm still playing the same because I love it so much. I love playing Pokemon Red on the hardware it was originally meant for. I have Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow on my 3DS. I beat Red and Yellow. Blue, I, I'll beat later. But right now, I'm trying to beat Red. Also, Crystal, but that's another thing. I'm trying to beat Red. I'm training up for the 8th gym leader. And I love playing it on the Game Boy because it feels right. It feels natural. It feels like the way it's supposed to. Also, the fact that I have a Game Boy, when I show it to lots of my friends, they flip the fuck out. They're like, oh my god, is that an original Game Boy? I'm like, yeah. They're like, awesome. I'm like, damn right, it's awesome. So yeah. Uh, but you may be wondering, what about the backlight? The backlight is nice. You also may be wondering, what about the battery life? Well, the battery life isn't really altered. It's a little altered, but so much so you can't even notice it. I mean, I got this thing for my birthday, and... I will tell you right now, my birthday was about two, three, four weeks ago. I just replaced the batteries, which means I got a good two to three weeks out of this Game Boy. And it was well worth it. I got a lot of shit done in Pokemon Red. I got my Mew. I've got I've gotten all the way up to the seventh gym, training again, training for the eighth. It's great. I've gotten a lot of life out of this for just for four double A's. And that's still amazing. That's better than my 3DS XL. My new 3DS XL right now, I can only get like, what, four hours? Maybe four to eight? I'm, I don't really count, but I know I can't get a single day, a whole single day out of it. And this thing has a backlight now. So the fact that I can still get two to three weeks out of this thing if it has a backlight is amazing. Okay, and I know there's differences between the Game One and the new 3DS XL. It doesn't matter. Okay, the fact is this thing has, that thing has amazing battery life, and I love it. Also, another thing I got for it was a link cable, and I love the link cable. Right, I used it to trade between gold and silver too, so mostly gold, just so I can evolve my Kadabra into an Alakazam, because I have not been able to do that. So yeah, final statement, I, again, I would recommend this Game Boy, either you buy it like modded already, or you do it yourself on a deserving Game Boy, okay, because historical preference. We should keep some Game Boys that are fine as they are, as they are. But yeah, guys. Also, you may be wondering. What do I use with the link cable to trade with the original Game Boy? Well, 
I, first of all, I used my Game Boy Advance and my Game Boy Advance SP since the link cable for the Game Boy Color slash Game Boy Pocket are kind of the same for the Game Boy Advance line. And so you kind of have to do a little messing around and you'll get it in there and it's fine. Also, I use this. Also, this is what I'm reviewing next time. So guys, hope you liked this video. Like, subscribe, add your favorite. Now you'll see you guys later.